true. So how's the uh, kanji? How's the uh, Japanese study there going there? Uh, Sorry. Matt G V Japan. Me? Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, You've been doing it for four years, right? Almost like six years now. Okay. Well, I kind of took a year or like half a year break ish. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to count that. But if you count that, it's like probably six and a if half. If you put it in hours, would you have a rough idea of the part where you had to actually study, look up stuff to figure mm -hmm. out meanings of versus just um, having fun listening to the things? Well, how would you, the the effort part of it, yeah. how much would you put in? How many, how many hours would you say that is? That or is that kind of well, it's difficult? hard because I'm never really, I'm never really totally off the clock, you know. Right. Like I was uh, before, I was just making lunch with my headphones on, listening to an audio book, and I still stop to uh, look up some stuff a few times. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always kind of, uh, you know, it's you can't really totally separate it. Right. But mm -hmm. I would say probably like I only spend maybe an hour a day like making new. SRS cards, like actually like taking the sentence I collected, looking things up, and uh, making the cards, and then I'll spend another like hour or two every day reviewing my other my old cards. Yeah, and sense. besides that, I'm pretty much just engaging with native media. No, no, that makes sense. And yeah, again, the engaging with the native medium thing is, uh, you know, what a lot of people don't do. You know, they're afraid like they gotta learn Japanese first, then enjoy it. It's like no, you can enjoy it while you're learning it, but I. I might have some arguments on what could be more structured, especially that beginning phase, but yeah. But if you're in the intermediate phase, like after you've definitely got 2,000 words under your belt, you're, you really should be watching and listening to a lot of Japanese. And I'm guilty of not doing that. <laughs> I'm yeah, so what are all your uh, complaints about AJAT? Just curious. Oh, just about the beginning section. You know, because you can actually have that structure for beginners and then prep them to do the... Um, you know, again, the, the sentence the, the sentence mining that's going to be a big part of it, essentially gathering the material that's tailored to you because it's stuff that you're enjoying. Um, but, yeah, the, yeah, basics, in, the beginning stuff, though, in, like, everyone should be able to, it could be the same for everybody. It doesn't matter because it's going to be, you know, again, the, like 150 kanji you're going to use 50% of the time. Yeah, learn those. Don't just wait for those. You run into them. You're going to run into them. But it, yeah, it's half yeah, dozen, well, six I, and one, I, half dozen I, the other, right? So I'm not trying to say anything's wrong with it. This is my personal yeah, yeah, feeling yeah. on it. Well, I don't, I don't think Katsumoto ever really intended people to, like, literally jump into the wild with zero foundation. Like, he, he didn't spend that much time talking about it, but he said that when he first started, you know, he took this grammar book called All About Particles and mined the whole thing yeah. and, like, read the grammar instruction. And I, I do think that you should do more than that. Like, that's pretty bare bone. And I know other people who've done that bare bone of a, of a foundation and still didn't have too much issues but i recommend like i i just released a video yesterday which is like my version of ajat mm. kind of like the timeline and what you should do at each stage yeah and i i say uh, yeah you should take a basic grammar guide and like and like learn all the basic grammar and all the basic vocab and just memorize it yeah, because i mean the whole the whole idea of sentence mining is that you're you're looking for sentences that are i plus one right and so mm -hmm. if your i is literally zero of course almost nothing is going to actually be plus one so you need some kind of training wheels to get you started. Well, actually, the, each word is a plus one. Each kanji is a plus one. Each grammar point itself is a plus one. Um, so there's that. And so that's why, you know, using a, a structured source is saying, hey, look, <laughs> these things can help you later on when you, you know, the stuff that's going to be all the time, you know, you can learn that in a structured way. And that'll help you when you go to the unstructured path, which, and again, the unstructured path, a lot of people who do great, take that unstructured approach because especially in languages where you don't have as much material like Japan offers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so I think then we're pretty much all on, on the same page. And also, yeah. like, what, what Katsumoto said to do was learn all the kanji first. So it's like before you and even actually start. that's what I would disagree start. with that. I would disagree with that one. And, cause, and I'm talking... Why is that? I, and this is a guy who has learned all the kanji first. <laughs> uh, one, you, there is no all kanji to learn. So I'm just, again, it's well, just... yeah, of course, of course. And... Again, so and it was just the idea, do I want to spend 150 hours learning 2,000 kanji, or in that same amount of time, let's learn, use that 150 hours to learn, let's say, 500 kanji, and 1,000 vocabulary words, and maybe 100 grammar points. Which one do I want to use first? And the first one, if I, the first one, I only have kanji, right? so I can't use that, like, in my, during my immersion thing, if, if I'm watching Japanese videos or anything, nothing I hear is read or see, I'm, I'm actually understanding. Whereas the second way, same amount of time, not as many kanji, but I've got more words and vocabulary as well. 
and now I, if I'm watching some Japanese stuff, there's some comprehension. There's some comprehension there, you know. Okay, so, so this is uh, so okay, so this is what I would say to that. So basically, what what you're, the way that I think about learning Japanese is that, uh, depending on what your final goal is, the path you take from day one is probably going to look different. So if your goal is to get to the point where you can have basic, easy conversations with a native, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, bear like make your not not die in Japan then I would say that's a good approach to take. But if your final goal is to get to a, like, a close to a native level or to like way above an end level to the point where you can f completely function in Japanese with and without basically being a handy, handicapped anymore, like in Japan, then uh, you're, that basically means that eventually you're going to need to know every country. No, but I'm saying I've only said 150 oh. hours, the first 150 hours. Yeah, I know, I know, but what I'm so saying is like now if, at the 150 hour mark. Now again at six. Learn, yeah. If you're eventually you're going to learn, but okay, but if you're going your way, you have to learn the most common 150 kanji, right? The most no, used. No, 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 500 kanji. 150 hours, 500 kanji. Okay, okay, then, then the most you have to use the the most commonly used 500 kanji. Right. But if you're if you're going, like, you, r r learning kanji in the order of most common use is is much less efficient than uh -huh, learning them uh -huh. in the order wait, of wait. their components. Wait, 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 wait. You can, what you do is you learn the bulk is 500, so the most 500 most common, then you sort those in the Hazig or KKLC order. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, it, are you watching my stream right now? Yeah. All right, so these are all 555 kanji that are that by learn them in Hazig's order. So yeah, I okay, no, I get what you mean. I get yeah. what you mean. That is that is a, a good idea. Right. So because again, uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, when all is said and done, you know, but but you again, you're going to need to know two thousand kanji. We're also going to need to know about six thousand to ten thousand vocabulary words. You know, six hundred so grammar. Now you may not know what the grammar points are. I mean, you could through immersion intuitively understand grammar points especially at those intermediate and advanced levels. Like, this is going to be, okay, you've seen these phrases so many times, you just intuitively know what it's doing, even if you couldn't explain it in an academic way, in a, the way a, a grammar is explained. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying, like, you have to actually read a grammar book, or in, especially at the intermediate. Now, the, the basic level, it's good, because <laughs> there's just something radically different between what Japanese is doing and English is doing with respect to explaining these words. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, but so eventually, then at some point in your model, you're gonna go and then learn the remaining. Oh yeah. Fifteen. And, but it's more and straight. So, but it's, it's mixing in the vocabulary and grammar more into the, with the kanji. So it's not it's not super bulking it. It's it's basically using macro chunks as opposed to, the micro chunks. It's the standard of a college textbook. Is you know so that's like you're learning like fifteen per chapter, you know. So very slowly. So. So I, I agree that that would have a benefit of uh, it's more, it's probably more, f I don't know if fun's the right word, but it's less boring uh, mm -hmm. because obviously doing 150 or spending 150 hours on nothing but kanji up front is a huge, uh, yeah, and it's I've very done difficult. That. And I've do. done that. So most, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Most, too. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know it's very, very difficult to do. But uh, besides that, that it's, it's easier from like a mental standpoint. Mm -hmm. Are there any other benefits if you look on the time span of like two years of studying to it's do it that same, way rather than just doing it's, it's, all, all, all. Um, I don't think there would be any, at the end point, it's going to be the same. Yeah, well, because well, I you think there's people, the, if you one of the people. other benefits of, of doing them up front is that now even you, you oh, it allows a, you to Here's a negative benefit. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I actually got an answer for you. Is that, because okay. remember, these 500 kanji are used 75% of the time. So that means when you're learning these thousand to two thousand vocabulary words you're seeing these kanjis in context a lot more often or up front all right and then when you learn the next set of kanji you're going to learn more rarely used vocabulary words but also these kanji are not all those 500 kanji are going to appear in all the vocabulary words you learn but they might show up less and less so there's the benefit there is that you spend 150 hours but the retention is a little harder for those the rarely used kanji because they're not popping up in anything other than the review time you have when it comes up oh, on the kanji yeah but if if you're if you ask the rest of them correctly and you learn them correctly, then right. it should be enough. Like you should still have like. Not, but I'm saying though, the only time you're experiencing them is in the SRS. So you yeah, basically yeah, learn the kanji only for the kanji, not for the fact it's used in a Japanese word. Well, you're kind of like it's an investment for the future because that way you can 
like w you can jump out into the wild and yeah. and but what i'm you, saying you, is like even you if you're not learning the words it's like it allows you to jump into the into the native media quicker because it's just uh you can just even if you're not you don't officially know the words more it just it makes it more comprehensible but i can do that know? with like, 500 as well i'm saying these 500 count for 75 percent. the next 500 account for 15 percent. 500 after that is eight percent 500 after that is like two percent <laughs> So you're spending the same amount of time that that last 500. You spend the same amount of time as the first 500, but you know you you're only covering three to two to three percent of any potential chance you're running into it. So there was that's the other reason there. It's like now obviously you need that two to three percent, but it's not you're not going to be at a level of grammar or vocabulary to get that benefit until later on in your studies anyway. So maybe hold off kanji to those later points in the study. And by that time also you're so skilled. You know, after you've learned a 500 to 1,000 kanji, you could probably learn any kanji, even if it's not a joyo kanji. You know, it could be one of those, you know, it just happened to be in a precinct or a prefecture or a person's name or some weird word in a fantasy book you're reading, you know. And so that's a more important kanji to you than, you know, this one that happens to be in a, a rarely used family name. You know, one's joyo. Yeah, that makes one's, sense. So that's where your, your, now your sentence ma mining comes into play. Learning a kanji that pops up in sentence finding is more important than a kanji that is only there because it happened to be in this Joyo kanji list that the Japanese government put together. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. that is a pretty good argument. So then, what at what? But and when you say people learn kanji, actually, never mind. So, at what point exactly do you think people should make the transition from having everything spoon fed to them to actually trying to sentence find with native media? Oh, that and that's up to the person. Um, like right now, I would say definitely after the basic level so uh 500 to, usually i have 1100 kanji so the first what i did is i did the two books from um 2001 that kanja odyssey that that kanji list and i just te teach those in hazig's order and then that's 2000 vocabulary from the core 2000 series and then the basic grammar from take him so after that you should be able to sentence by no problem and it, yeah, yeah, I agree totally. And if that's all you did, I think if, in the same amount of time as someone who did a structured approach, you'll both be about the, I would think, probably similar levels if you both put in similar effort. So then what are you doing here with this, uh, like, I know and stuff? Oh, uh, this is just a course I put here. So this way is a, for people who don't want to have to think too hard of what to gather. It's like, okay, this is all pre-processed for you. So, hey, this, is, this vocabulary you're going to learn is going to be very useful vocabulary. This kanji you learn is going to be useful kanji. And this grammar is going to be useful grammar. And then I also show them how to use sub -CSRS or S for essentially using dramas to create comprehensible audio and text for you to read. Oh, so this isn't you studying personally. This is like just you teaching I'm doing both. class. Well, no, no, I, I'm making the material. I'm studying it. Part of the studying means I'm learning it, but also I can also um, quality control it, fix errors, and add information. Yeah, yeah. Well, it kind of seems, well, like, if you've been studying Japanese for, because I, for, like, so long, because I remember when I very, very, very first started learning Japanese in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, I learned how to use sub -S, S with the, your video on your YouTube channel. Yes, but that didn't, I, I, but when I got back from Africa, I stopped studying Japanese. Even though I lived in Japan, I stopped studying Japanese. So my level, like, went off a cliff. <laughs> but um, I started back about a year and a half ago, and, and I had, I'm trying to fix all the problems I had back then. I said, okay, hey, if I started from the beginning, how would I want someone, how would I have wanted to do it? And that's the reason why I've created the course in this way. And I'm using Memrise because unlike Anki, if I make a, let's say I fix something in Anki, no one else sees those repairs. So they would have to download my fixes and somehow sync everything up. Whereas with Memrise, it's all automatic. So that makes things easier as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess, yeah, that makes more sense. And, and, and like I said, there's nothing wrong. Now, I, I had some problems with some of the things Ajat was saying because he was kind of really anti-grammar. And then I realized, like, there is some real good benefit for how for grammar explanations, especially the... Yeah, well, I mean, especially you, have to kind of take, yeah. you have to take that, uh, remember that he was uh, talking to a specific group of, of people, you know, who were, yeah. compl who were like, doing nothing but grammar. So well, that's, he, he was had, talking like, about himself. And, and I agree... It, which and it worked and but yeah that doesn't mean it's going to be uh workable for everybody so that's why yeah yeah but i, I feel like like you have to remember that when cats first came on the scene he was like bringing a lot of ideas to the table that have really hadn't been talked about before right and so Agreed. he was kind of reacting to the 
to the time that he mm -hmm. was at where where people were over relying on grammar so when we look at it now it seems like oh he didn't emphasize grammar enough right but i think really it was like at it was already time, a given that people were never going to drop grammar completely anyway so I'll say this. i think he was just trying to yeah. I, I would say this. At that time, the only answer, whenever they say, I want to learn Japanese, what do I do? They would say, you have to take a college course. That was the only answer anybody ever gave. Because it's the only reasonable answer you get. But by the time Katsumoto got on the scene, when the internet was really taken off on, you know, we were starting to get all this collection of Japanese material where you you could enter in, you could bring Japanese society to you, that was no longer a re that was no longer the only answer. And this was actually a not an effective way of doing it through self-study. It didn't require you to take a college course. So yeah, I, yeah, you know, yeah. That's why I liked AJ. Hey, you know, I followed AJ. A lot of the ideas I came came from AJ. You know, and uh, I just felt like, hey, you know what? It it didn't to say it was perfect then is would be idiotic because, like I say, things had, things change, and we've got some things that have improved since then. Um, it's workable. And then and again, this is and this is some experience I had from talking with other people, but also myself. You know. What were some of the mistakes I did? Like the thing I did was writing out everything by hand. It was a really big mistake because that took so much time doing reviews, which is time taken yeah, away I from learning stuff. That as well. um, yeah, I, I, I never did that either. But I did, <laughs> and because I got that yeah, from yeah, well, I definitely like I think like for me because I see my stuff will get posted on the Learn Japanese subreddit and I read the comments and, and you get a couple uh, few people will tear you apart, yeah, or try to tear it apart. Yeah, yeah, well. Well, yeah, and what, what I realized the biggest issue is people aren't really looking and listening to what I'm saying. They have this preconceived notion about what AJAT is, mm -hmm. and they just and then they they just shut themselves down. They won't open. They're not open for discussion. Whereas I'm not dogmatic at all. I've I've changed a ton of things, right. and I'm still open to exploring new new changes. I'm not I'm not like this some like AJAT fanboy. And I mean, a lot of people ask me like like I could I could stop calling it AJAT right because now I have my own channel. Mm -hmm. And I have my own Patreon, and I could I could make my own brand, but I just feel like that would kind of be ingenuine because I really I owe all all my own Japanese fluency to AJAT, and the core principle of you know like the core principles are still there of mm -hmm. you know mass immersion and input before output, and yep. uh, yeah, yeah yeah, and so so I think I don't know I wish people and I would argue like your input so like for example the input before output people misunderstand that and that's where I say well if you have like a, a grammar card that when they say hey here's an here's a here's a sentence in English say this in Japanese now you can say oh my god that's that's testing output but you have the immediate correction there with the answer so that's not as bad that's guided so since it can be corrected on the spot that's not that's actually not a bad practice uh, as opposed to what you have in like colleges say here say something in Japanese but you've got zero correction till the next day till the next time you talk to a professor if you talk to them so that was a benefit that like um, Anki brought to the table is that you got immediate correction in problems you have if you're trying to do the equivalent of translation well yeah but well the way I think about input before output is mm -hmm. that you don't want to be speaking like that you know there's a difference between like practice and theory it's like you can read Jap in Japanese. They say this, and now that that's like theory that you have, but mm -hmm. that's different from actual like knowledge you've gained from native Japanese. You know, it's different from hearing like be watching a Japanese drummer or talking to a Japanese person and hearing them say something and then knowing, oh, Japanese people actually say this. So what I think the input yes, for output is you should never creative. you shouldn't yeah yeah you shouldn't be and and I would count like using theory that you gained from a source created for learners as still like you, being creative even if it's like just because you, you want to be all only be yeah it's like you, you like what i think of it as the grammar allows you to understand the native material and then you get you get the what you're gonna say from the native material yeah you know? and that's mimicking right and it's that, that's yeah, all yeah. i think and, what um what you you do get it when you get a ginky book though they're actually telling you to like be creative and that's a bad idea if you don't have a teacher yeah, there yeah. to fix anything you mess up on um, but with Anki, we could be creative, but you're in a very limited scope. Like, yeah. Well, well the, the like in this case, you're either mimicking. That. Here's a Japanese audio, re mimic it, repeat it. That's great. Or here's a text, and it should be very. You should be able to express this concept in Japanese at the level you're at, because you, you know, again, and if you don't, you got the answer immediately coming up, and then you can correct it right then and there. So your brain's not like actually saying, "Oh, wow, this was the correct way of doing it." So I'm going to fix that. Yeah, but I mean, the other thing is, is like even more than that is when you think about our own our knowledge of our native language, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like 
even if you do know grammar rules, you learn them after the fact, and and even before you learn the grammar it's rules, all you intuitive. knew it was right or wrong. Right, it's intuitive. Yeah, yeah. It's like if I said, uh, why, like, why do why do English speakers say say the big red dog instead of the red big dog? Yeah. We don't know why, but you but you know it's true. And if you want to really sound like a native speaker in Japanese, you have to have that intuition. And the only way to get the intuition is is through math. Hearing intuition. a lot, yeah. you know, it doesn't come from studying grammar rules. Now, the grammar, what it, I usually I usually refer to them, they're just shortcuts. All right, they're not they cannot be hard rules. The way Japanese speak is the way Japanese speak. The grammar is just kind of helping to try to explain why they're speaking the way they are. So yeah, why? Well, yeah, I, I think of it as a tool that will allow you to comprehend things yeah. because uh, it's like I think of it as a two-step process. First, mm -hmm. you're just trying to understand what Japanese people are saying. Then, once you're understanding what they're saying and you can understand native media, then you can just uh, you can start actually taking notes on like what you you can start mimicking. You right. know, and it's a pretty easy right. process. And in, in, like once you like for me, the 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 click for the grammar thing is with the take him was you know he, he said just think of these as like. Um, like we would think parenthetical phrases, you know, uh, not parenthetical, I'm sorry, prepositional phrases, but in this case, postpositions, particles. So you don't literally like, it's not kuruma and then day or kuruma ni or kuruma o, it's kuruma o or kuruma ni. And so treat them as almost like as one set. Yeah, you kind of look at it as a whole package. You can't look at, you know, ku, the word kuruma, then the particle ni, you look at them together because you'll, you'll start seeing some particles don't go with some words. <laughs> Through the yeah, mass yeah, exposure, yeah. The rules are are, are um, an abstraction. Uh, yeah, and, but that made things made sense to me. And then you know everything revolves around the verb. You know these are now there are people that would vehemently disagree with that, but to me it makes the most sense. It's like you know things when take him explain that, then my understanding to me clicked. And it yeah, made things yeah. easier. And you now for really... you it might be something else. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think for a lot, a lot of the the biggest thing I see beginners doing is asking why all the time. Yeah. When it's not really, it's just not really care. helpful to and ask. Yeah, why. yeah, you shouldn't yeah. care. It's like, look, this is the way it is. All right, <laughs> accept it, and you don't fight against it. Don't fight against kanji because you're not going to be literate in Japanese without kanji. Um, and the way I try to explain to people about why kan why I teach kanji in English as opposed to Japanese, like, well, kanji is not Japanese. Japanese use kanji. Now, kanji is very simple to learn. You you know, like I said, you and I, we learned like the, how to memorize the writing of 2,000 kanji in 150 hours or so, right? Yeah. But we don't didn't know like the 6,000, 10,000 words that use those various kanjis <laughs> or how to pronounce them. That we didn't learn. And those are not so simple. The kanji itself was very structured. In fact, uh, two other languages use it, Korean and yeah, yeah. Chinese. Uh, Korean to a very small extent, but Chinese mainly. Without, without knowing a lick of Japanese, so you can learn kanji without Japanese. And then you learn how Japanese use kanji and it makes things easier. Yeah, it's just like you learn yeah. the alphabet of English before yeah. you learn actual words. And even the That's alphabet not. is not English. Alphabet is a subset of the pronunciation, which is in a subset of the vocabulary, which is a subset of the yeah. phrases and and the phrases that go into speaking. You know, so again, these kind of help build on each other, and. That's where I screwed up as well. You know, you got the gentleman um, Dogen who stressed pronunciation, phonetics, which was uh, I wish I had started off learning that, and then my pronunciation would have been much better today. But yeah, well, the the thing about uh, Dogen is because you know he emphasizes he says you should be putting conscious work into this from day one, mm -hmm. basically, right? And I think he's working off the assumption that people are taking a pretty traditional approach, which includes outputting from day one as well you know you're in your class you have a speaking test you're gonna have to speak and so once you start speaking then uh, yeah I think it was really important to, to start learning this stuff and start building all the right habits because right. basically the whole idea is it's easier to build good habits the first time than correct bad habits much easier yeah now but, uh, but again it, I now it, output it, is you know, now output now this is where you and I may disagree I don't consider I have no problem with people mimicking output that's all now, what I, what a gentleman who, um, the, the Japanese a year, Sean Andrews, um, what he did, and, it, and in fact, I'm going to have to do this in about 20 minutes anyway, is he, he, from day one, he started hiring a tutor, you know, twice a week on Aino, or not Aino, on Italki, to correct it, make sure he's, his pronunciations are perfect, which is not a bad idea. Now, that's not, a, that's not an option available to everybody, but if you have that option, definitely use it. Yeah, but I just, I don't, that doesn't sound like a, a really practical approach to me because basically 
if you think about uh like when you're listening to a foreigner speak english mm -hmm. right you can tell even if they're extremely proficient and like are 99 percent uh ha like have a 99 percent accurate like american accent you can still immediate immediately tell the smallest mistake they make whether mm -hmm. it's uh like you know pronunciation or or like the stress accent or whatever and it's like an alarm just goes off in our head so we have this model in our head of how english is supposed to sound and it, it automatically like allows us to autocorrect when we're speaking ourselves, And then that's why we sound native, right? Like even if there's someone who was uh, a native speaker of English up until they were 25 years old, but then they lose their hearing, right? Within 10 years, their speaking deteriorates because they can't autocorrect their speech. So it's this auto autocorrection mechanism that allows natives to sound native. And so I think if you don't have that scent, that model in your head of how Japanese is supposed to sound and you're and you're trying to speak, you're having a native correct you, you're like a blind person trying to paint a portrait because you don't, you can't hear if it's right or not. You're just trying to remember, like have the other person correct you and you're like, okay, I guess I put my tongue right here. But just like a deaf, uh, someone who goes deaf, that's not maintainable. You know, it can't maintain itself. You need to be able to auto correct yourself. So now, and the only way to do that. Now that's yeah, a theory. Yeah, so that's a theory. And I need to ask you though, have you watched Japanese in ear videos? His, the videos that he's put out. Who? Uh, Japanese in a year, Sean Andrews. Yeah, yeah, his accent is is not good at all. And I watched the one on the twelfth on the twelfth month. Year. On the twelfth month. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't. He's like, like his 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 accent was awful. It, it just sounded like a normal guy gene accent. His okay. pitch accent was way off. His intonation was way off, and his pronunciation was off on like basic vowels and, and consonants. You should show it to a native and ask them to grade. I, well, I mean, like, that's what it, I always do. I've shown it to a couple of people, but okay, I didn't. They didn't give me that. Like, but like compare, it, compare it, it to is, like a video of Dogen and say, okay, who's if if uh, a native is ten? Dogen's uh, much like, better. Like, yeah, Dogen's much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would like to think I'm much better as well. And I never put any conscious effort into pronunciation. Right. Pretty much now, at but all, again, ever. now we have to look at he's he's still at his 900 hour mark, whereas you're at your uh, yeah whatever 2500 hours probably. probably. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, as for active speaking, listening, and whatnot. So, like I said, I mean, you got to give it a little weight on you again. He's not saying he's uh, super, but he start he started from say he he's conscious of trying to say things correctly when he says it, and uh, you know, it takes correction. Now, um, I don't know. It's uh, maybe it's going to be. It's just to me, there is some fun in speaking Japanese. I'm more of a mimicker. My pronunciation is really bad, horrible. Um, I probably mimic better than average, but it's still bad. But it's, I, I don't know. It, I, for, for me, I was saying, hey, if you're having fun, it gets you to it. And the cost is a, a bad accent. Oh, oh well, you're still having fun in Japanese, so go with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, like I said, I don't think everyone has to have the same goals. But I'm always thinking, if if your goal is to get as good as humanly possible, what is the most the best approach? And I don't think about is that going to be the most fun approach? Is that going to be the most realistic approach? And I, I know that that's, that turns a lot of people off and that's fine. Like I have my own niche, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's kind of cool that I'm a, I've been able to find more and more people, like the minority of people who, who are interested in, in the same, same way of thinking. Yeah. But, uh, and there's, there's that risk though. You're going to gather people that are fans of you as opposed to are going to be fans of your method and put it to use. And that's, yeah, that is a risk. Yeah. Because some people will do that, like they'll okay. Here's a video of someone I like, and you know they offer that as opposed to what they're doing in that in that process. Um, I, and like I said, I'm trying to use the material which, like, I'm presenting it, and it's I've got my own little theory on it, and I'm trying to put it through use, and it's probably is overkill in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, especially like the amount of grammar I put out there. Um, but part of it was to give people options, like, hey, you know, personally, I think the Shinkan Zen master course that I put on Memorize was the best grammar course, but that's not a grammar course you're going to give to someone who's just starting out, because they need to have a at least some basic you know, level of a thousand vocabulary and 500 kanji, you know, they, they need to at least have that under their belt, before this thing is not like, <laughs> this thing is approachable as a learning text as opposed to every sentence you're trying to, you know, learn, you just only care yeah, about yeah. the grammar point yeah. in that, that, that a simple sentence is there to try to get across. Um, yeah. anyway. well, well, just as like a well, one of the last thing I want to ask you is just mm -hmm. like it seems like we're pretty much on the same page about a lot of stuff, and right. even on the things we disagree on, we can understand each other's point of view. Correct. You know, we don't. It doesn't sound like uh, like you think I'm crazy. I don't think you're crazy. So wh why do uh, why do my videos get like shredded apart when they get posted on that Reddit? Like, what are people even 
Like, what is their real issues? Um, like, I've only seen two videos, and the one that I think one of is you're describing a point, but we're not seeing your Japanese skills. The other one was you reading, um, I think, a visual novel. That was the only other video I saw, correct? Yeah. Um, well, the yeah. thing I noticed on the on the one of uh, on the one of where I was just reading a visual novel, it's like people were just creating these crazy theories about how, although I posted that video, how I could somehow be faking it and actually not be good. Right, and I talked to Socrates, and, and he he actually changed his opinion. Like he thought he came across too strong once I replied back to him. Like, there's no way you could fake. I mean, it would t in the effort you would take would be studying itself, and that's something you would encourage the people. You know, to do. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it's just—it's just like, why are you going in with the assumption that it's fake? It's a, a real. It's like you—you you obviously have your side before you actually looked at the facts, and now you're just trying to construct an argument that that you know makes your side sound sound correct. But why does that have to be your side when you first start? Yeah. You know, like why do you ha why are you going in with the assumption? Okay, how 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 is he bullshitting? Because it can't can't be legit. And and the end news also would be is like, who cares if he practice for it how does he sound like this is 20 minutes of him speaking japanese from a text source how would how did he do that's really should be the only question like i i was not a level to grade you i couldn't you know again you're beyond my level and which <laughs> side note that's kind of the reason i got back into learning japanese i kept hearing from people oh nuke man i'm glad I'm, I'm like in one and man i use your stuff to help me get started and here i am barely like not even in five right so it was like embarrassing so it was good that i like and you mentioned it as well, but um, to get me started. But the the idea though is that you know again you have a level you present it and it was obvious even to me. It's like even if you faked it, mission accomplished. You know, <laughs> if you had spent five hours to perfect that twenty minutes, that's five hours well spent. That's five hours practicing your your ability to read Japanese in a fluent in a literate manner. Mission yeah, fucking and accomplished. And then, <laughs> I mean the thing the thing that from my point of view, like when I read those comments, was that. Uh, like you can't fake good pronunciation. Like mm -hmm. it just—that's not how it works. Like Correct. you couldn't just like 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 that that Andrew guy you were talking about. He's working with a native speaker all all this time, and he still just can't get that pronunciation. And also, it's like I'm sure these people couldn't tell that. But I was reading. I had like I, oh, I, I'm confident I had at least over 95% uh, correct pitch accent because mm -hmm. I've been I've been working I've been practicing that. So it's like I don't I don't really think you could you could fake that unless you had like unless i was like working with a native right like for like all these hours trying to get this exact same thing and everything plus uh i think if, if you actually paid attention like i make a bunch of mistakes if you pay attention to the type of mistakes i make if i was faking it, it wouldn't make sense for me to make a lot of those mistakes mm. like and, and the whole reason and the other thing is like when the people just make comments like oh cool he's showing off his ability where it's like if you don't make a video like that then people are like oh well where's the proof right. like what if you're just bullshitting? And then when you make one, then they give you shit like that. Where, and the reason I made that video was because I'm, I'm, a, I'm working on another video explaining why I think people should do Remembering the Kanji. So I wanted to at least have some kind of thing. Like, I'm not some random guy on the internet. There's, like, mm -hmm. some reason that you, you should trust me because at least it worked well for me, you know? Yeah, and for me, it's... And Matt, that's, yeah, and that's what you kind of have to do. And the way I would recommend is, one, make them shorter videos. You don't need a 20-minute video to demonstrate your ability. You can do two. You can demonstrate in different Go ways. On. Both yeah, of you talking... Yeah. One is maybe five minutes talking to a native person, which is good. You reading, um, you know, a random piece of text like you you showed. I think your 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 level should be beyond question. And you know, what I also recommend is, you know, maybe record yourself taking the the JCAT test, right? And, oh yeah, that'd be a good idea too. And because that's again not something you can easily fake. I mean, yeah, it can be faked. All you gotta do is just have a native person with a talking in your earpiece or something stupid like that, because it or they're taking it for you. <laughs> you know, that's easy enough yeah, to fake. Yeah. But I we're do just it on, to... on camera. But yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to know, um, because I asked you before on one of your videos, what, what, um, but I didn't check the comment. What's your JLPT level? Uh, I've never actually taken the JLPT, but when I look, uh, like when I look at practice tests, they're like unbelievably easy. Like. I probably could have passed it after like three years ago easily. And I have other, I have a lot of my friends who have also, who have actually taken it and passed and one that are not even close to my level and don't consider themselves fluent. So, okay, so I mean, you think you could pass on one? Yeah, easily. I could do it in my sleep. In my opinion, the JLPT is an awful way to measure Japanese ability. Yeah, right. definitely. Definitely, I mean, because it doesn't, you know, take into account speaking at all or anything. But yeah, but even fair, just but again, reading, like you. 
but but the, the, could, let's step back a bit, okay? But again, is it the benefit of let's say JCAT or that? Is this a, again? Is this a? Is this something everyone else can do? Now I think JCAT or the JLPT is not good because it's twice a year and it's expensive. Well, reason? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, funny. that's why. That's the only reason I haven't done it. But JCAT take an e day. And it's something that other people can compare against, like, okay, they know what the test is like. They saw how you're doing. Okay, you scored this high. Okay, yeah, your level is, that's a reasonable level of your ability to read and listen to Japanese. You know, not speak, because you said it's a horrible. But you, you presented ways in which you do speaking, which is you can go into the, invite a couple of Japanese speakers into Japanese text here and just have a co quick conversation for five, ten minutes. And anybody who's a reasonable level of Japanese can gauge that, yeah, your, your level is beyond question. Now... The question is now, can you recreate the methods of the way you learn Japanese for other people to utilize as well? Therein lies the rub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. it's definitely difficult, I'm definitely working on and, it. And, but but if uh, you can pull it off, like I said, if you, 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 that's one thing um, Katsumoto never really did. He wrote texts in Japanese, but he was, never really heard him t speak in Japanese too much, uh, except yeah, for a couple I, of videos. I, and there was always that I, doubt in people's minds. Uh, yeah. I have a video of me going out and talking to random natives like on the street, but mm -hmm. it's only for uh, it's like a Patreon only video. Mm -hmm. uh, but may, I guess I should probably make another one, just put it out there. Yeah, and it's just and it's just say, hey, look, I'm just trying to just and be honest about it. Hey, yeah, look, yeah. I'm showing you to someone that you can you won't be at the level to gauge my Japanese. However, you can show someone whose level you trust what is to gauge this person Matt v Japanese Matt versus Japanese skill Matt versus Japan's skill level. Yeah, and the th that's the thing I always tell people is don't, like, if you're, well, one really good metaphor I heard was uh, someone someone told me who did Br Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They said, when you're a white belt, blue belts look like black belts. Right. And so it's the same thing with Japanese. People can't, you if you're, you can, in my opinion, you can only accurately judge the ability of someone who's just to the same level to you as you or maybe slightly better. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, they're just, you, you have no way to gauge it at all. And so, but people don't understand that which is one of the, the issues. Like for me, the core thing about learning about learning Japanese is that there's a lot of people attempting to learn Japanese and if a lot of people don't put that much effort into it, but there's still a lot of people who've been putting a lot of effort into this for many years and most of them never reach a high level at all. Uh, and there's, it's hard to judge this because the best thing we have is the JLPT and in my opinion, N1 is still a very low level. It's supposed to be. I but mean, it's basically it's like, like a, a person who is just at a... It's like at a, I would say... I wish they would have Japanese school kids take it, but I think it was like it's like a 14-year-old a Japanese student might, you know, should be able to pass a JLPT one, uh, one with no problem, and one with no problem, or, or maybe miss some few yeah, things because so, the kanji yeah. level. Because the kanji level, they might miss some things, but that's that's I mean, how yeah, I, I, I you're just, you're not yeah, an yeah, adult. Like, you're not near college level. You're not high school. No, level. and there's you are and there's still a lot of like if you're level. a an American person who studied to get to the JLPT N1 and you can pass it, there's still going to be a million things that a 14-year-old can do that you can't do. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, they're still going to be able, they're going to be 10 times better than you in right. the language. Uh, so yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, five-year-olds are more amazing at grammar yeah. than, you know, you'll have to study for hundreds of hours just to get to the level of five-year-old. Yeah, and so I think, it's like, I definitely don't think that I'm the best. I don't think that I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. I think there's people better than me. I think Dogen's better than me. Uh, I think right I have here. a ton of I think I have a, a, lo a lot of room to improvement, but I'm like definitely, I would consider myself to be in the 99.9th percentile of Japanese learners. And, and, I'm, and so it's just like always shocking to me that people still like, just like people, I mean, I, I, I'm only talking about like the people, the mainstream people on the Learn Japanese subreddit, because mm -hmm. I do have my own following who, is, who I really enjoy. But yeah, it's just like, if they could see that like all the people that are doing what they're doing are not getting results and i have these this like incredibly rare results uh maybe they would just at least listen to what i'm saying because in reality they're not even listening they're just they go into my videos ready to, sh to shoot it down you know yep well, well they, they just take the idea of immersion and i think you would say this the biggest thing is that you listen to a shitload of japanese and you read a shitload of japanese that's the secret and to get that you need to have you need to understand some vocabulary you need to you know at least I don't think you need you need more and more vocabulary. The more stuff you get, the more and more you understand. Would I be wrong yeah. in saying that? No, yeah, totally. Yeah. It seems really. We're talking obvious. about Japanese study. Okay. The st or more like the study of Japanese. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna yeah, I mean, I guess people like it's so. If you don't spend a ton of time with Japanese, you're not going to get good at it. It's yeah. like pretty obvious. Like. Real life. The hours in ten years. Now. <laughs> Matt, 
Yeah, and like I said, I mean, listening to a lot. Now, I think where Ajax got wrong and was the whole just listen all the time. And listening all the time is not the magic thing. You have to listen to comprehensible audio all the time. So at the beginning, that's where, again, that's a lot of this material I've been developing was about that beginning part, the, the part that, you know, isn't there where anything you do is, yeah, there's yeah. nothing Well, there. I, don't, I don't think yeah. that matters as, it matters, but not as much as some people think. Because some yeah. people think if it's not like Door the Explorer, then you're not going to get anything from it. Mm. But if you just take like your average slice of life anime, of course, like there'll be a lot of sentences that are like way a- above your league. But there's going to be ones that are I plus one because there's 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 sentences that are that are I plus one to someone who knows zero Japanese in anime. You know, it's like if someone bumps into something and says itai, or like someone like says itadakimasu before they eat. It's like there's a lot of things you can learn just through. Uh, through through the, these shows, and so it doesn't have to be a hundred percent comprehensible for you to take things away. If there's anything you're you're, you're understanding, you're going to take that away. Right. And in the very beginning stages, the what only saying, real point I, I, of immersion I is is to is to allow is to basically because like people think, oh, I don't, I haven't, I've just started studying. Why should I immerse myself? It's because until you've listened to a few hundred hours of Japanese, your brain can't even parse the the, the sounds. It can't even parse the phonemes. Mm. So it basically, it doesn't even matter what you're listening to. Uh, it's because it's, at the beginning it's going to be gobbledygook, but 300 hours in it's going to sound like words and sentences, even if you don't understand them. Right. And so that's the real point of listening at the very beginning. Now, and there's why, and this is, I think it's like, again, we're kind of agreeing, we're just uh, about what, what time started. It's like the immersion, sorry, because again, to get that basic level is about 400 hours. And I think you can take care of the 400 hours in that first few months. And I don't think if you're not immersing yourself in, you know, Japanese in that first few months, is you're not going to be hurt. But you can... There are some audios you can listen to to make, you know, to help with this immersion thing. And that's, like I said, I'm just, it's just that worry that all you need is to listen a lot. But no, you need to make sure it turns out. Yeah, no, of course. It's a, it's, it's a big, and like what, what, what I said, it, like I have a video on, a, on, on how to do immersion. And what I said is passive immersion, like leaving it on in the background is effective if you're also doing active immersion mm. where you're, you're engaging with it 100%. And you're you're looking up the things you don't know, and then if you listen to the same thing that you already actively immersed with in the background, when you're when you're not paying that much attention, like maybe like while you're walking somewhere or going to the bathroom, you can still take a lot away from it, you know. Yes, and I but agree because that's what I did. Just leaving it onto the background. But but again, that's if you, where if you just have background noise that you don't that you don't that is in completely incomprehensible, and that's all you're doing. Of course, that's not going to do anything. Yeah, and and again, that's where again I made that post like eight years ago where I said. A- AJAT wasn't work for me, and this is how I got AJAT to work. It was just very simple. You subsessor S, turn this hour of drama into comprehensible audio, and listen to that a shitload of times. And then all of a sudden, my not only was my listening improved, my speaking improved. Whereas up to that point, I was listening to hundreds of hours, you know, of audio, you know, on my iPod, you know, because I was working on a ship and I was always listening to it all the time. But it, none of it was comprehensible. So that was the switch, and that's why I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to get to that point of being able to use subsets as effectively, so I'm not like you know trying to fight every sentence. Was hey, I need to build up the basics of okay. Here's some basic kanji vocabulary grammar and that made the subsets as that's much easier. So really, all this was about hey, you know, fuck this, fuck the uh, structured study part. At this point, you can stop it at that point and go to the the fun stuff. You know, the subsets as and the full immersion. If yeah, I think the, the 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 lesson to take away is that really thinking of of AJAT as a method, you should be thinking of it as a philosophy. And the method you use to put the philosophy into action, you're gonna have to go somewhere else to get because Katsumoto didn't give it to you. Yeah. And I guess that was always obvious to me, but I think some people just they they didn't get that. They thought like literally because that's because Katsumoto when he started a blog, he wasn't setting out to become a language guru that like fed you exactly how to learn Japanese. He was just like, hey, I I did this cool thing. Here's what I did. If you're interested in this stuff, then uh, maybe you can do you can yeah. try something similar. You know? Yeah, and like I say, I think you and I is like once the free stuff. Once he started yeah, doing yeah. making it financial, it went to shit anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, and I have a video explaining that everything after 2009 from Katsumoto you should completely ignore. Yeah. This is pretty much when conversation about him stopped on the uh, uh, the con- the um, Kanja Kohi forums as well. It started turning. Matter, into- yeah. yeah. All right, man. Hey, I got to go, but um, it was a pleasure talking to you. I hope, like I said, I'll post a link to the YouTube stream since, I don't know, when, <laughs> whenever this conversation started. What? All right. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Enjoyed talking. It was nice talking to you, man. All right. Thank you. And I'm glad my, uh, my stuff helped you get good in Japan or in Japanese. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
All right, later. I gotta get a. I'm gonna be getting a phone call. All right, thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Matt. Yeah, what's up? Are you in? Okay, so I'm probably gonna be getting a phone call real soon. Let me check. Do a uh, refresh on this. Um. Okay, let me go and. That was not expected. I apologize. So I'm going to. I was almost done here. I was expecting to get a lot more reviewing done. Uh, that gentleman was. That's the first time I've ever talked to that gentleman. Um, he was nice talking to Matt versus Japan. I've heard his name before. Seen his videos before. Uh, he's definitely much much higher level in Japanese than I am. So take his advice above anything I ever have to say. Uh, but like he said, is that um, what I've done has helped get people get started in Japanese, and they have continued on from there. And that's kind of my goal with this material. Is like getting people where through that very hard first thing is like what the fuck do I do you know to the point where hey I can take this anywhere I want to go after that um, those are the ideas there um, that there's you know there's no one hard set path there's that's why it says this is a rec suggested it's not a that's why it was very particular saying suggested or recommended <laughs> that's that's all there's no hard one way to this and again it's the idea is like hey after 2,000 hours or 5,000 hours you know you want to be at a certain level of being good. And the biggest thing is there is like, hey, you need to list a shitload of Japanese and read a shitload of Japanese. And in fact, do it in an active way, like engage and enjoying it and whatnot. I'm guilty of not doing that. But when I do actively do it, I notice my level does improve. Okay. Uh, let's see. Get this right. I should. I mean, I'm going to tur turn my speakers on real quick. But let me go and get some water or something. Should be getting the Skype call. Okay, so let's see if I can get this to work. Alright, let me get some more water. Cadron. I don't know who Cadron is. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so let's bring up Skype. I'm not seeing anything. Let's try. Actually, I should be. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to stop the stream real quick. I'll start it back up when the tutoring session starts, okay? I don't want to be displaying this uh, information accidentally, you know, re uh, release somebody's info. All right. So yeah, but the uh, tutor should be this uh, Irina, Ed, Irina uh, from Osaka, Japan, but she lives currently living in Mexico, according to this. So it'll be the tutor for today. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop the stream, and again, I'll be coming back in a few minutes.